Finally freeing my storage lol here is part 15. Chapter 33. Destined. Let's see how much your words are worth. Those were Valley's last words before his helmet materialized again, ready for combat. Issei imitated his action, with the addition of stretching out his arm and making a purple magic circle appear, at the same time that a katana appeared with its scabbard. The brunette drew the sword from his sheath, striking a distinctive pose, keeping one foot forward as the point of the katana pointed at the albino's neck. The air crossed between the two, and circled until it reached where the other spectators were, who at this time had already taken care of all the enemies and were together, watching the fight that was about to take place. Meanwhile, Odin and Yasaka seemed more intent on breaking the powerful magic circles that held them captive, but they were still watching what was about to happen out of the corner of their eyes. Meanwhile, a little further away, Penemu and Tiamat were standing on the shattered ceiling of the room where the meeting had previously been, watching carefully what was about to unfold. Quote dot dot dot, shouldn't we intervene? Penemu asked, causing Tiamat to put her hands on her hips with a half smile. Don't you want to see what he's capable of after all his training first? Tiamat answered her with another question, bringing a small smile to the cadre's face. Yes, and a lot, answered Penemu, fixing his gaze on the chestnut. Despite the time that passed, both remained in complete silence, until it finally broke. But not for them, it was the work of its tenants. The green gem glowed brightly in Issei's hand, indicating the presence of the dragon. Asterisk from now on, everything that awaits either of us. Diedrag's tone sounded even harsher and more stinging than ever. Asterisk its death. The dragon's final words made both Issei and Valley reaffirm their combat stances. Asterisk in that case, let me tell you the same. Diedrag. Valley's wings glowed brightly, at the same time that Albion's words were present. Inside his helmet, they both frowned, and everything around them went black. To one side of Issei, Diedrag's flaming face could be seen. While on the other side, it could be seen how next to Valley was the flaming white face of Albion. Not even those imaginary flames were audible. The silence was impressive, as if both wielders were waiting for some kind of signal to start fighting. Asterisk very good. Diedrag's figure became fully present next to the brunette. Asterisk the tenth battle between the white dragon emperor and the red dragon emperor. Albion's figure imitated Diedrag. Quote ellipsis quote, quote ellipsis quote, both dragons tightly clenched their teeth. Asterisk Kamienza. Both dragons launched at an impressive speed and collided heavily, creating a huge burst of light. A second later, two people in Diedrag and Albion's armor could be seen trying to kick and punch each other, covering and trying to counter their blows. The figures were changing in size, and the scenery that represented them around them changed from wars, to completely desolate lands, to massive destructions, symbolically representing all the battles of the Sekiryotes and Hakuryukas up to the present. Finally, the symbolic act ended, where you could see how Issei and Valley were dancing in combat on a par with what was previously demonstrated. White flames adorned the half where Valley was located, while red flames adorned the other half where Issei was located. Valley was in charge of dodging and blocking all of Issei's blows with great elegance, turning on himself. The movements of both were extremely perfect, making it a delight to the eyes of anyone who liked fighting. Even so, it was clear who was faster. And, therefore, it was clearly seen who was having the most advantage. Issei tried to cut him with his katana, but was repeatedly surprised. That Valley's armor was much more resistant than his. He assumed that this difference was due mostly to the power gap that existed between the two. But that only made me think of a quick fix. I just need more forcefulness. She thought to herself, her eyes widening under his helmet. In one of Valley's many blocks with his hands, the katana flew up, causing the albino to miss immensely. How strange. I'm sure I didn't increase my strength, he thought. When he saw that Issei had left a strange opening, the albino tried to hit him in the chest, only to be surprised when the brown-haired man grabbed his arm with both hands, and then pushed himself and did a big somersault, taking the katana with his feet and causing the blade to fall at an extremely high speed, piercing the side of Valley's helmet, producing a deep gash on his cheek. Or at least, that was supposed to be, since a small amount of blood was expelled from the helmet by the cut. The metal part of the sword completely plunged into Valley's back and generated a small crater, emphasizing the speed he had taken on his journey. Far from losing his balance, 
As his body twisted by the forceful cut indicated, Valley recovered from one second to the next, something that took the brown-haired man by complete surprise. He barely gave her time to cover his chest in an X shape, before he was thrown backwards by the massive blow his opponent had landed on him. After rolling a few meters, Issei managed to compose himself somewhat and landed on the ground. His gaze was fixed for a short second on the completely shattered armor on his arms, which quickly regenerated thanks to Diedrake. The brown-haired man looked up again at his destined rival, who was cleaning the blood that protruded from his helmet. Finally, it stirred the blood towards the ground and disappeared in a huge burst of speed that generated a huge blizzard at its previous position. Issei quickly got up and leaned both his hands out in front, miraculously parrying Valley's punch. Both continued with the dance of kicks, punches, jumps on the other, and other acrobatics. This time, that sequence lasted less time, since Valley caught both of Issei's hands with his own, creating a kind of struggle. Both of their bodies were trembling intensely, indicating that they were exerting a large amount of their strength in order not to give into the other's power. Valley dematerialized his helmet, denoting his bleeding cheek. I'm starting to get bored of this. He exclaimed with a big smile, at the same time letting go of one of Issei's hands, even though he was still pressing against it. The brunette looked at the hand in complete disbelief, when he saw how a white orb grew bigger and bigger in his hand. You get distracted so easily. He exclaimed the albino, giving Issei a strong knee to the chin that destroyed the lower part of his helmet, and then kicked him hard in the face sending him flying and ending up breaking his helmet in the process. Valley jumped back and pointed the orb in the direction of the brunette, who still hadn't finished bouncing on the ground. Dragon shot. A huge arc of white light that destroyed everything in its path was sent towards the brown. Luckily, Issei managed to respond in time and got himself together in the air, landing fruitfully while creating three magic circles in front of him that acted as a barrier. The powerful dragon shot hit the first barrier, damaging it heavily and destroying it in a matter of a second, just like the second. Finally, the brunette used a large part of his strength to maintain the third, causing the barrier to crack quite a bit, while the excess energy passed to the chestnut's sides. Issei couldn't help but be impressed at such a magnitude of magical power. He felt that he would be drawn into the attack just because of how fast and rampaging he was. A few seconds passed where everything he saw was only white because of the white magic, until finally the attack ceased, and a huge curtain of dust was generated throughout the area that did not allow anything to be seen. The chestnut left his posture, seeing how his magic circle had been just a breath away from being destroyed. His ears pricked up when he heard a strange movement to his right. Over there, he thought the brunette in alarm, glancing to the right of the barrier, only to have his eyes widen in shock when it came to his katana. A faint, although Issei's resolution had been quite quick, he hadn't had enough time to turn around and respond to the attack at the same time. Issei received a large kick to his neck, which squirmed like jelly. Issei's eyes covered in pain were quite clear, at the same time that her entire body crashed violently against her own barrier, ending up destroying it. Finally, he could see Valley's entire body appear out of the dust, a huge hungry smile as he was going to deliver what was supposed to be the final blow. The brown-haired man used the same rebound of his body to his advantage to take his katana while still in the air, delivering a strong sword strike into the air that took the albino by complete surprise, but he was still able to dodge it, raising his arm quickly. Although, in this way, he cancelled his attack, and his body was completely exposed. Issei didn't waste a second and with his other hand delivered a strong blow to Valley's abdomen, generating a huge current of air, indicating that the attack had been very strong. But, Valley's armor had not received any kind of damage. A big smile appeared again on the albino's face. I must admit that it was a good move, he thought to himself, as he began to direct his other fist at the brown's chest. But the difference between us is abysmal. Just before the albino's fist was embedded in the brunette's chest, Issei opened his fist, which was still resting on Valley's abdomen, denoting a small reddish orb. Dragon shot. Diedrake's loud scream was followed by a loud scream from Valley, as his entire torso was exposed to a powerful reddish light that severely damaged his armor, causing him to spit out a large amount of blood in the process. The brown-haired man didn't miss the opportunity, punching him upright under his chin and then kicking him hard in his chest, sending him flying, and making Valley roll for the first time in the entire fight. 
Issei grabbed his neck while rubbing it with a little wince, watching as Bally slowly got up from the ground. It's incredible, the brunette thought. He took a dragon shot at point-blank range and even then his armor didn't budge to the attack. He finished, genuinely impressed at the power of his opponent. I must admit, you have a lot of interesting tricks. The albino commented, wiping the thread of blood that came from his lips. But, I'm sure you copied that last one from me. He declared quite gracefully in his words. Though it doesn't matter what tricks you use. After all, you are already using the maximum that Balance Breaker can give you right now, while I, I haven't even used my sacred gear yet. He concluded, making Issei look at him with great intrigue. Your sacred gear? He asked, opting for an attacking pose with his katana. Each sacred gear has its own power. The albino explained, something Issei already knew. While yours is responsible for increasing, mine is responsible for reducing. He added, causing Issei to widen his eyes at the revelation. My power is known as divide. Why haven't you used it yet? She asked the chestnut immediately after hearing his words. Valley simply crossed his arms with a smile. The divide is a much more complex power than the boost. I need to get in contact with the user to whom I want to apply my power. It can be both physically and magically. Issei couldn't help but frown. That doesn't answer my question. She exclaimed. A smile appeared on the albino's face, which was enough of an answer for Issei. Although, if that hadn't been enough, Valley raised both of his hands to emphasize the enormous destruction that just one of his dragon shot had caused. Basically, he was telling his face that he was too weak to need to use that power. Damn, he exclaimed the brunette with venom in his voice, as he tightened his grip on his katana. You have something to tell me. Valley asked with her smile still on, preparing for the shock. The albino's eyes widened dangerously. Why don't you tell me to my face? Finally, both were thrown off at enormous speed, going to the crash. Just when there was a meter left for both of them to meet, everything began to move in slow motion for the chestnut, while he thought. I know very well that I am much weaker than him. The thoughts made the brunette's gaze slowly soften on the outside. I know very well that I have no chance if I fight with my own strength. The thoughts continued, but, I'm not like you, Valley. The albino's hand slowly began to form a fist and rise against the brunette's abdomen, while Issei changed the trajectory of the katana to a more diagonal one, something quite strange. Yes, I love battles just like you. But, if it's to protect my comrades, the image of Rias and the others entered the scene for a short second. If it's to protect my best friends, the image of Matsuda and Motohama flashed through her head. He didn't know the reason, but Gasper, Azazel, and Tanon were also added to his thoughts. Finally, Issei's eyes slowly moved to where his raison d'etre lay. If it's to protect my world with them, and their world, endless memories passed through the chestnut's mind, in all those precious moments he spent with those two wonderful women. Those two beautiful women who were capable of shaking their entire being even at a time like this. I don't care if I borrow my enemy's power. Finally. The weather returned to normal and both blows collided on their destinations, generating a huge roar and crater at their feet, which raised a small curtain of dust in response. They all watched with great intrigue as the dust disappeared. Everyone was shocked, at the excretion of Tiamat and Penemu, who clenched their teeth in rage at the sight. The two figures were still stuck by their two attacks, although the forcefulness of one over the other was quite clear. Issei's legs trembled intensely at the pain, at the same time that he did his best not to vomit. Finally, it became impossible for him to hold on, so he lowered his gaze and vomited a huge amount of blood, being able to see more clearly how Valley's fist had completely pierced through his armor, reaching his abdomen, almost piercing him in the process. Meanwhile, Valley just sighed in disappointment as he saw that Issei's katana had dug deep into the armor in a downward diagonal fashion, just below the gem that was in the center of his chest. Now can you see the difference? The albino asked, clearly bored with the combat. My punch completely pierced through your armor, while you could barely pierce through my armor using a katana. You couldn't even cut through my skin. Valley looked at the brunette's shadowed gaze with mild curiosity. But, you could have tried to pierce my neck, knowing that the density of my armor in that place is much less. I doubt someone like you would have missed that. Issei coughed up even more blood, generating a small puddle at his feet. If I had, you would have dodged it. You know your, 
Weaknesses pretty well, as do I. That's why you let it hit you, because you didn't see any real danger. He answered the brunette, coughing up some more blood. After a second, Issei looked up from her with a strange smile, something that undoubtedly confused Valley. Besides, this is precisely what she was looking for. After his words, Issei affirmed the grip of his katana with all his strength. The albino could only raise an eyebrow at not understanding this, but it didn't take long for him to receive an answer. Using the katana as leverage, he ejected the gem from Valley's armor, at the same time there was a small silvery explosion as the albino forcibly lost his armor. Everyone was completely incredulous at this movement, especially Valley himself, who got up from the ground and saw how Issei got up in the distance, while the gem he had extracted remained at his side. Issei got to his knees and spat out another large amount of blood, to then hold his abdomen tightly at the sharp, burning pain that ran through his entire stomach. It was slowly fading away, but surely the blow had been much more critical than it seemed. He knew pretty well it was going to hurt like hell when his body got cold. I can't lie to you, you surprised me. It's been a long time since someone managed to completely remove my armor. The albino commented, to then materialize his armor again. But how can a move like that help bring you victory? He asked himself, unable to find an answer on his own. That won't help me get the win. The brown-haired man answered, wiping away the blood that ran from the corner of his mouth. Issei took the gem that was next to him, looking up and giving her a predatory smile. But this is, she concluded, making Valley and everyone else's eyes widen in shock upon hearing that. Are you planning to use the power of the white dragon? Rias asked, incredulous at what she heard. Penemu was alarmed by what she heard, and was about to jump into the fight to interrupt it, but Tiamat stopped her with her hand. Remember that he replaced his demonic arm with a dragon's. He stated the dragon with great calm. If she didn't suffer any consequences that time, this is just child's play. Diedrag, you always say that I have a great affinity for dragons. He exclaimed the brunette, raising the gem as high as his hand could. I understand how you think mate, and I'm with you until the end. The Diedrag exclaimed with the same enthusiastic tone and somewhat covered in madness as Issei. Valley just deigned to watch with his eyes wide open as Issei tried to embed the gem in his left arm, causing a screeching light of red and white to begin to fight each other. Asterisk are you alright partner? Diedrag yelled at the top of his lungs, so Issei could hear his voice over the incredibly annoying noise the lights were making. My arm hurts like hell, but that's a long way from stopping me. The brown-haired man responded with another shout with a big smile on his face as he felt how the power of the two celestial dragons began to merge. Finally, a strange purple glow reigned over the other two glows, blinding everyone for a few seconds. When everyone opened their eyes again, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Issei's armor on his left arm, Xenobia commented, her eyes widening like they couldn't. He is white, asterisk he has merged the power of two incompatible beings. This is unheard of, asterisk. Albion declared with a tone full of disbelief. Although without a doubt, the most impressed of all was Valley. They only needed to see her face to prove it. Deidre, the brown-haired man asked, tightly clenching his left fist, which now had a white aura and armor. As expected, no side effects. The dragon exclaimed, quite excited at what he was witnessing. Finally, Valley snapped out of his stupor, and began to laugh frantically as if he had just been told the best joke in the world. Something Issei didn't take very well, and her frown was proof of that. What do you find so funny? The chestnut asked, pointing at him. Not funny, this is fucking entertaining. Valley yelled with a huge smile on her face. The albino pointed at it with great emotion. I don't know exactly who you are, Kyoto Issei, but you're the most interesting guy I've come across so far. She yelled with the same excitement with which she pointed at him, then thought carefully. A somewhat confused look crossed the brunette's face when he saw how Valley's expression changed radically. But, looking at what I've seen, I think you could be even more interesting, he thought, before raising his arms and giving her a somewhat macabre smile. To make this even more entertaining, I'll take care of killing your parents once I'm done with you. That, Tiamat wondered, quite shocked at the albino's outburst. He's provoking it, Penemu answered her question quickly. He knows that Issei hides much more potential. 
he wants to release that potential through her emotions, since the boosted gear responds to the emotions of her wearer. Do you think Issei can go even further? Tiamat asked, thinking that balance breaker was already at his limit. The limit of that balance breaker is only reached when your emotions overflow, and you have enough level to reach it. It works just like the evolutions of that same balance breaker. Answered Penemu, unable to avoid a small mocking smile. But, Valley won't achieve anything if she tries for a place where there are almost no emotions. A mocking smile shot across the brunette's face, something that surprised Valley. If you're trying to make me angry, you're not on the right track. The chestnut commented, crossing his arms. The relationship with my parents is broken. He stated, indicating that he didn't care one bit if something happened to them. This was undoubtedly a setback for the albino's plans. In that case, he thought, turning his gaze to where Rias and her servants were. Valley pointed at them, making the brunette follow him with his gaze. Then, I'll start with your beloved comrades. She snapped, causing Issei to clench his teeth slightly. You won't do anything, you bastard. She yelled at him furiously, something Valley met with a rather deep look. It's far from enough, he thought, then his gaze fell on Tiamat. He knows that Tiamat could blow me to death, so it's not worth trying to go in that direction. Valley closed his eyes for a short second, deep in thought. Therefore, I only have, Valley fixed his gaze on Penemu, frowning slightly. I guess I don't lose anything by trying. Before the brown-haired man pounced on him at his words, Valley raised his hand in a signal for him to stop. On second thought, I should leave you dying and force you to watch as I torture Penemu to death in the worst possible way. In those moments, Issei's hair darkened his gaze. That won't help either, Penemu thought aloud, waiting for the brunette's reaction. In those moments, Issei's body began to shake with anger, at the same time that his gauntlet glowed brightly. A host of memories of him and Penemu flashed through his head. From that time they both witnessed the fireworks. From that time when he went with her one day to the beach. Of all those times he slept next to her, and the way his heart would feel every time they were alone. All those precious moments, his beautiful smile, asterisk Albion bearer, Diedrag's voice echoed, making everyone look quite curious, especially the albino. Asterisk if there's a next time, you'd better choose your words more carefully. He concluded, too be followed by a huge surge of crimson power rising up into the sky, generating huge currents of brutal air. Is seriously, Penemu wondered aloud as she covered her face from her because of everything that was happening. A faint blush hovered over her cheeks due to the reaction of her future lover. Issei clenched his teeth tightly at the same time as he looked up, crossing his arms in an X shape. Finally, he abruptly extended his arms to one side, causing all the powerful crimson energy that emanated from him to focus solely on the armor, generating a huge explosion of final power, where the following word was heard. Explosion. The dust curtain slowly disappeared, dazzling a completely serious Issei, as the crimson glow faded and appeared on his figure, showing that he was containing a lot of power. His crimson armor, now even more crimson, looked more imposing with that glow, and the thin reddish aura so pure that surrounded him completely. A small smirk appeared on Valley upon seeing the result. That's what I was waiting for. The albino whispered, then clenched his fists tightly. Ah ah, a loud scream tore from Valley's lungs, causing an enormous white glow to blind everyone for a few seconds. The clouds of hell were pierced by this powerful aura, which was controlled much faster than the previous one, returning to the albino's body at a noticeably faster speed. He spread his arms out to his sides like Issei did at the end causing one last small burst of power to build up around him. After a few seconds, Valley appeared out of the dust with his armor shining with the same intensity, and with that thin pure white aura surrounding him. Unlike Issei though, Valley seemed to be smirking rather smugly at what was about to happen. They both began to approach slowly, making everyone stay in complete silence, watching with great attention. That energy, Sirzex commented, thoroughly impressed. Yes. It is the power of the heavenly dragons at its highest purity. The limit of balance breaker. Azazel commented, completely in awe at the sight. Finally, both of them stood face to face, where the two shared a rather deep look. The two auras were violently colliding with each other. Valley was simply enjoying what was happening, but Issei didn't seem to reciprocate the feeling. 
If you touch even a single hair of Penemu, Issei's voice sounded as deep, harsh and severe as he had never heard before. I swear to you that I will make you no destinies worse than death. After hearing his words, Penemu could feel how every fiber of her body jumped with endless precious emotions. Her completely shocked face and the huge blush that covered much of her face was all Tiamat needed to see to know that the woman had fallen even more in love with Issei, if that was possible. Am I really, really that important to him? The Kadri wondered, feeling her heart pound and her chest burn with passion. A passion that only Issei could control. Vali's smile did not waver after his words. In fact, it only increased. Show it with actions, not with words. End of Arc Chapter 34 Outcome. White Dragon vs Red Dragon. If you touch even a single hair of Penemu, Issei's voice sounded as deep, harsh and severe as he had never heard before. I swear to you that I will make you no destinies worse than death. Valley's smile did not waver after his words. In fact, it only increased. Show it with actions, not with words. An overwhelming silence fell on the battlefield. The spectators watched attentively as the outcome of the combat was about to unfold while they were in charge of protecting Odin and Yasaka, who had not yet finished undoing the magic circles created through the power of Opus. Rias looked at everyone, puzzled by their attitudes. No. One plans to do anything. The redhead asked, earning a look from everyone. That is to say, the vast majority here are known to be the strongest of their factions. She concluded herself, making Sirzex look at her seriously. It wouldn't do any good. She quickly answered, then looked at Valley. We don't have much knowledge of the Hakuryuko, but we wouldn't have anything to do against it. The Demon King turned his gaze from her, fixing it on Tiamat. Only she could do something. Whoever intervenes will die before doing anything. The dragon commented, making everyone freeze. It's not a battle that concerns any of us. She finished, then placed her hand on top of Penemu's head. Are you okay? She asked herself, unable to hide the mocking tone from her. You've got that big blush on your face for several seconds now. After hearing his words, Penemu shook her head strongly, trying to get rid of all those precious sensations that were running through her body. The tone and expression of her face returned to the same as always, although internally she continued to fight against those beautiful feelings. Hey, Kaneko, Kaneko, Gasper yelled, trying to get out of his restraints. Damn it, why is no one coming to help us? He exclaimed with comical tears in his eyes, as he watched as the match was a second away from starting. Finally, the first to make a move was Issei. And what a move. The brown-haired man had raised his hand from one second to the next, being stopped by Valley with his forearm. The impact generated a huge wind wave that reached where the spectators were. And just as quickly as that wind appeared, it disappeared. But what? Almost all of the Grimori thought before the apparent leap of power that the chestnut had. Valley wasted no time in responding to that outburst, attempting to hit him in exactly the same way. Ironically, Issei covered him with the same intensity and technique as Valley. The small shock wave was almost immediately followed by a larger one as their knees collided, causing both of them to be dragged back several meters by the same inertia of the blow. Even so, their stances had remained invulnerable, and the large mark their feet left on the ground was clear proof of that. Hey! Valley spoke, preparing to jump while striking an offensive pose. Let's stop playing games, shall we? Issei didn't reply, but she hinted that she was okay with her idea as she opted for a pose quite similar to his. From then on, Valley's smile changed to a radically different expression, opting for a seriousness much like Issei's. Both of them jumped, causing Rias and her servants to widen their eyes in shock as Issei and Valley's figure was barely distinguishable. The first to try to land a punch was Valley, who missed by inches when dodged. The albino didn't give up there, chasing him and attacking him again, where the brunette somersaulted back. Issei didn't rest there, as he quickly jumped to the side, where a small curtain of dust was generated, indicating that Valley was once again close to hitting him. There wasn't any kind of rest, as Issei had to quickly jump to the side to dodge another attack. Rias's eyes were wide as she tried to follow the fast movements of the two men, which was almost impossible. The speed of both was so high that he had to guide himself with the curtains of dust and the small red and silver blurs that he occasionally saw. Basically, it seemed that both of them were teleporting endlessly from one place to another because of the enormous speed. 
Finally, both of them began to float with great lightness as a rain of punches that were incredibly fast was seen from both sides. That way, both Issei and Valley dodged and blocked the dozens of attacks per second, hoping that one of their blows would hit the target first. You could see how they seemed to teleport from one place to another while creating small craters. In one of the many attacks, Issei had to take cover, for which he was thrown backwards by a blow, being quickly followed by his opponent. It didn't take them a second to collide again, where Issei seemed to be able to keep his guard up, dodging and trying to counterattack again, implying that he had recovered very quickly, and managed to fit into Valley's rhythm again. Although as was predictable, Issei gave in a bit again after a few seconds due to the strenuous labor, causing him to be forced to dodge without even being able to counterattack. After three punches dodged in different places, Issei was forced to take cover in an X-shape, causing a small shock wave to spread throughout the room. Issei was strongly dragged by the blow, while the albino did not seem to lower his forcefulness one bit, hoping to break the chestnut's defense with his fist, still pushing the armor. Something he accomplished when he used his other hand, delivering a hard blow to her cheek that twisted her face to the side, generating another small shock wave, causing him to be forced to dodge without even being able to counterattack. After three punches dodged in different places, Issei was forced to take cover in an X shape, causing a small shock wave to spread throughout the room. Issei was strongly dragged by the blow, while the albino did not seem to lower his forcefulness one bit, hoping to break the chestnut's defense with his fist, still pushing the armor. Something he accomplished when he used his other hand, delivering a hard blow to her cheek that twisted her face to the side, generating another small shock wave, causing him to be forced to dodge without even being able to counterattack. After three punches dodged in different places, Issei was forced to take cover in an X shape, causing a small shock wave to spread throughout the room. Issei was strongly dragged by the blow, while the albino did not seem to lower his forcefulness one bit, hoping to break the chestnut's defense with his fist, still pushing the armor. Something he accomplished when he used his other hand, delivering a hard blow to her cheek that twisted her face to the side, generating another small shock wave. Issei was strongly dragged by the blow, while the albino did not seem to lower his forcefulness one bit, hoping to break the chestnut's defense with his fist, still pushing the armor. Something he accomplished when he used his other hand, delivering a hard blow to her cheek that twisted her face to the side, generating another small shock wave. Issei was strongly dragged by the blow, while the albino did not seem to lower his forcefulness one bit, hoping to break the chestnut's defense with his fist, still pushing the armor. Something he accomplished when he used his other hand, delivering a hard blow to her cheek that twisted her face to the side, generating another small shock wave. And obviously, that was not good at all in combats where they don't give you a break. Issei. Rias and his servants yelled, watching as a great rain of blows began to fall on his face, threatening to destroy his helmet. Far from being overwhelmed by the pressure, Issei quickly thought of a plan, fully stopping his opponent's drag, then delivering a strong double kick to Valley's chin, sending him several meters into the air. Issei's only movement visible to the Grimori was when he flexed his legs, as he then disappeared. I can not see them. Rias thought, clenching her teeth tightly when by pure intuition she raised her face, seeing how Issei appeared behind Valley's back, who apparently was still flying from the previous blow and had not managed to compose himself. Apparently, just as the brown-haired man was going to punch him hard, Valley disappeared from his sight for a short second. The albino was about to send him to the ground with a strong kick, but Issei responded in the same way as his opponent and dodged the attack at great speed. Various slow but very strong and charged attacks were dodged by both of them at great speed, until finally a loud crash was heard, and everything trembled. Valley spat out a large amount of blood as Issei kneed him hard in his stomach. When it seemed that he wasn't going to respond after such an attack, the albino immediately recovered and dodged a punch from Issei, countering him with a strong blow to the chestnut's helmet that made him spin several times in the air, although he was able to stabilize quickly. The brunette looked ahead where the albino had previously been, his eyes widening when he saw that he had disappeared. It didn't even take a second for him to feel a sharp pain on the back of his neck from Valley's punch. Issei fell at full speed, creating a small crater, albeit quite deep. Without even a second having passed, both of them were already fighting far from that crater, 
with the same previous mechanics of quick blows, dodging, and trying to counterattack. After a few seconds, Valley tried to do a sweep, missing as Issei did a big somersault. The albino quickly followed his opponent, although he couldn't foresee the kick that came from behind, dragging him back a few centimeters, since his position was too solid. Issei landed a few feet away from him, only to be forced to quickly jump when Valley appeared at his side, burying his fist in the ground. The albino imitated the chestnut's action to dodge a kick. The cycle was broken just at the beginning, since Valley arrived at an enormous speed and gave Issei a strong kick to the helmet, although the albino could not escape unscathed, since he received a kick of the same force. The faces of both turned away from the inertia of the blow, and then flew off with multiple turns due to the forcefulness of the attack. Both managed to compose themselves at the same time, showing that the attack had not been strong enough to destabilize them. Finally, Issei flew several meters away with the idea of doing an air attack, but he didn't expect Valley to appear behind him. The brunette stopped abruptly, turning around quickly. Valley dematerialized his helmet, denoting his completely serious face. Issei mimicked her action, giving her a rather similar look. After a few seconds, a smile appeared on Valley's face as he spread his hands out to his sides, causing dozens upon dozens of magic circles to appear behind his back. Issei's eyes widened slightly at this, before he flew off at full speed. A large shower of small magic attacks began to follow him from behind, generating large tremors and a large amount of dust. Finally, Issei got tired of the little magical chase and began to fly towards the attacks, dodging all of them to a pinpoint. When he was a few meters from Valley, the brunette raised his palm to the front as a ball of energy was present in his hand. Just before numerous magical attacks hit him, the following could be heard. Dragon shot. The small magic attacks were completely destroyed, as were the magic circles. Valley was thrown out of the smoke screen with his arms in an X, indicating that he had managed to cover himself from the attack. The albino could not rest for a long time, since as soon as he landed on the ground, Issei came at full speed, giving him a strong blow that he could only block because he was still with his arms crossed. Valley tried to counter but Issei blocked Valley's fist with his own fist. Issei tried to attack in the same way with his other hand, but the albino imitated the chestnuts. Block. They both took their hands tightly, starting a struggle. They both dematerialized their helmets as their arms trembled intensely from the sheer amount of force they were using. The two of them were tightly clenching their teeth, indicating that they were using a large amount of their strength. Ah. They both started to shout, causing a silver and crimson aura to surround them. Both auras collided with great intensity, struggling to dominate the other. Divide. Boost. 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 Divide. Boost. 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 Divide. Boost. 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 The nearest rubble began to break into a thousand pieces, at the same time that great tremors began to be felt. Divide. Boost. 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 The clash between the abilities of each one was still present as the ground around them began to break into a thousand pieces, and their feet sank into the earth. Until. Both Valley and Issei almost fell off taking a powerful blow to their faces. The newly created great rain of blows caused great tremors, while the oars were still in constant battle and the ground kept breaking. Valley's eyes widened in surprise, and after a second, he received a heavy blow that sent him flying, creating a large line of destruction in its path. Not letting him rest, Issei quickly chased after him, though he was surprised when Valley snapped out of nowhere and aimed a white orb at his face. Dragon shot. Issei quickly materialized his katana, to then cross it in front of him. A second later, a huge explosion shook a large part of the battlefield, causing everyone to cover their eyes from the white flash and the huge blizzard generated. Valley watched the huge curtain of dust still with his hand tilted forward, alert for any movement. After a second, the albino couldn't help but be surprised when Issei came out of the dust towards the sky, seeing that his armor was almost intact. What is that sword? He thought to himself, watching as the brown dematerialized her again. Not even a magical katana would be able to completely stop an attack of that magnitude. The albino got so distracted in his thoughts that he couldn't help but raise both eyebrows when he saw how Issei raised both hands to his sides, beginning to create two dragon shot. Two dragon shot. Sears X wondered aloud. What do you plan to do? Rossweiss followed his thoughts. Hum. Tiamat hummed earning Penemu's attention. 
This could get very interesting. He concluded, cracking a smile. When the two orbs were as big as his palms, the brunette linked their hands, causing everyone to widen their eyes in shock as the energy combined. Issei's hands generated a large orb that threatened to explode at any moment. He must be borning. Valley thought aloud, keeping his expression stoic as he usually did in these situations, although the slight tremor of his eyebrows made his surprise evident. I can't throw that. Rias commented, then looked at her brother. If he throws it, the weakest would die. Sears X commented, watching as the great orb continued to get bigger and bigger. What are they waiting for? Issei's scream made everyone freeze. Protect Gasper and Kaneko. Rossweiss. Odin yelled, causing the Valkyrie to nod and rush to them, creating a large barrier. It just can't be. She exclaimed Asia with wide eyes. He seriously means to throw it away. Michael exclaimed, creating a large number of barriers along with Gabriel and the others to protect everyone, especially those who wouldn't withstand the attack. Meanwhile, Tiamat and Penemu stood with their arms folded, indicating that they didn't care about the forcefulness of the massive magical attack. Having gotten over the shock, a small smile appeared on Valley's face. It might be a very powerful attack, but do you think you can hit me at that distance? She asked herself, only to watch in slight disbelief as Issei began to descend on him with the huge orb. Valley quickly began to move, unable to help but chuckle slightly. Did you really think that I would just stand still for him to receive such an attack? He asked him, as he floated at a great speed and was chased by Issei a few meters away. Then something amazing happened. The Albion gem that Issei embedded into his armor glowed brightly. Divide. Valley lost his balance at the unexpected reduction in his power, falling to the ground. When she managed to compose herself, it was already too late. Issei was in front of him, outlining a small smile. Thank you for telling me how your ability worked, he commented, delighted when Valley's body contorted excessively, indicating that he had not expected this outcome at all. Dragon shot. A strong crimson light appeared in every corner of the place. The huge air currents hit the barriers hard, cracking them slightly. Everyone on the other side stared at the immense amount of power in complete disbelief, as the powerful crimson light made their bodies look like mere figures, until finally they were completely absorbed by the great energy. After several sounds, the wave sound finally ended, and the intense red color also subsided. All were fine, although the barriers were obviously damaged, except Rossweiss's, which seemed to withstand the impact without problems. Issei lowered his arms and let the sweat run down his face, while he watched as the smoke and dust slowly dissipated. A gigantic line of destruction was shooting ahead of him, which seemed to have no end. Around him, the ground had been completely leveled just by the huge blizzards that the attack generated around him. The brunette's eyes widened in shock as a figure began to make itself out of the dust, finally revealing the albino, who had lost all of his upper armor, along with his shirt. I'm sorry, but you'll need a lot more than that. She commented with a smile, as she wiped the blood from her lips. Her torso appeared to be damaged, though it was nothing serious. Did you see it too? Penemu asked receiving a quick nod from Tiamat. His armor changed at the last second, he replied, as he watched Valley regenerate his armor. Issei quickly pulled himself together and clenched his fists tightly, causing the crimson aura to surround him again. Although he could tell from his face that he was somewhat exhausted, unlike Valley who was as fresh as a daisy. Issei quickly flew in his direction, though Valley dodged his attack very easily and landed a heavy blow on his helmet generating another small shock wave signaling the return of the melee attacks. Issei took advantage of the same inertia of the blow to deliver a strong kick to Valley's head that forced Valley to take a step back. Again the frenzied and extremely violent attacks made an appearance, although now they were even more powerful and faster. The speed was so high that you could barely make out the movements of his arms and legs. By using a higher speed, you could feel the tremors getting stronger when a hit hits its target causing the affection's body to lose stability because of it, although it recovered almost instantly. The forceful blows to the faces were seen on one side as well as the other, causing the tremors to increase, even the earth began to collapse under such pressure. After several blows received, both ended up losing the helmet when they ended up destroyed, being forced to dodge the following blows. Every time they dodged a blow, a small line of destruction was generated just by the great force behind the blow. 
the rain of blows continued with more and more ferocity, further increasing the tremors and causing all the nearby rubble to begin to shatter from the missed blows from both opponents. Having put in the longest and most forceful punching match of the fight, Valley broke the formation, leaping away with a huge leap and taking to the air. The albino could not help but slightly grit his teeth, as he was forced to divert his flight to avoid a punch from the chestnut. Valley quickly tilted his hand forward. Dragon shot. The energy ball regenerated basically instantly, but Issei was able to react in time to dodge it, to then appear behind Valley's back and try to kick him. The albino noticed this and quickly cut his attack, dodging the attack with a somersault. Issei tried to attack him again, but failed, receiving a large kick from the albino in the back that caused him to spit out a small amount of blood. Before falling, Issei was able to pull himself together in time, although that wasn't enough. He didn't have time to dodge the punch to his face, but at least he was able to hit it back, causing another small shockwave to shoot out all over the place, at the same time as they both spat out a large amount of blood, due to already they were not wearing their helmets. While Valley was sent to heaven, Issei crashed to the ground, sinking into the crater he had created. Valley somersaulted in the air and quickly composed himself, only to hear two words. Dragon shot. A large amount of crimson energy was shot in the form of lightning towards Valley, who received it without warning. Valley tightly closed his eyes and gritted his teeth as he received the attack, then gave a loud cry and stretched out his arms as far as he could, causing a silver glow to momentarily blind everyone. Issei watched Valley's figure with wide eyes as he tried to regulate his breathing. This combat has already lost its grace. He declared the albino, while showing off his armor, although it had slight changes to the previous one, the enormous aura and his thicker and slightly modified armor were proof of that. That's, Issei thought, while his eyes trembled slightly. An evolution. Penemu completed Issei's thoughts, though she didn't look too surprised at the sight. Don't get me wrong. It's been fun. He commented her, while the aura of her armor completely outshone Issei's. But, in case you don't know, you're already at your limit. Hearing her words, Issei fell to his knees at the same time his breathing became more agitated and his vision blurred slightly. But, I made sure not to spend so much. Magic power. Valley cut him off, making Issei look at him intently. I may have told you how my ability works, but I didn't tell you everything. Valley explained, making the brunette widen his eyes. Unlike the boost, the divide requires magic to use. Valley's smile increased upon seeing Issei's expression. In my case, it's not a problem, since I have a large amount of magic reserves, and the ability doesn't consume much. But, considering that the consumption must have increased because you are using a power that is not yours, and also that you have practically little magical reserves. Valley shrugged leaving the end of the answer to the chestnut's imagination. No it can't be, Issei thought out loud, gritting his teeth tightly. It's been a lot of fun, Valley commented with complete sincerity, dematerializing his helmet. But the fun always comes to an end at some point, he concluded, crossing his arms with a rather penetrating look. It's over. Both Issei and Valley were surprised to see how Penemu positioned herself in front of the chestnut tree, with clear intentions of defending it. Penemu, Issei exclaimed, shocked at the fall's intervention. Do you think you can beat me? Valley asked, unable to help but raise an eyebrow. Remember I've known you for a while. She commented the cadre with great seriousness, as she unsheathed her katana. Considering your divide and the strength you pack with the first evolution, I'd say we're balanced. She explained herself, causing more than one to be surprised, especially Issei. It's true. Valley commented with complete sincerity. But, that is if he only used the divide in my first evolution. He commented, so that later his wings spread out more than they could. Half dimension. An intense glow and some celestial particles took off with great intensity from the wings, causing everything around them to begin to contract in a very strange way, as if they were splitting reality in two. What is this? Issei looked from side to side, unable to help but be immensely surprised at what he was witnessing. Didn't you notice, brat? Azazel asked, earning the brunette's attention. Explosion is your balance breaker's ultimate ability when it reaches its limit, allowing you to unleash maximum augments in just one second, as well as doubling the power of its wielder. He explained, making Issei start to realize what he was trying to tell him. 
half dimension is the ultimate ability of his balance breaker. I'm surprised you remembered her, since you only saw her once and that was a long time ago. The albino commented, just at the same time that the dimension began to vary even more. This ability allows me to have everyone's power, without the need to even get close to them, plus it also halves the size of everyone and everything. The only downside to this ability is that it takes a minute to run. Valley fixed his gaze on Penemu, unable to help but smile. And by my calculations, I could hold out for that amount of time against you without a problem. He concluded, so that then his armor glowed brightly, changing shape once more, denoting a much thinner armor, but emanating an immense amount of power. Penemu, I can handle it. I'm not going to leave you alone. Issei couldn't help but be surprised at the Kadri's outburst, who seemed to never waver, despite facing an opponent much stronger than her. Well, in that case, Valley didn't finish speaking, as he felt how a gigantic and icy energy was present on the battlefield, making absolutely everyone freeze in its presence. I guess I have to act now, Tiamat commented, standing in front of Penemu and Issei with her hands in her pockets. His long, silky hair waved with great energy, while everything around him began to freeze from the presence of his power. Valley simply looked at her with a smile, although the sweat on his face indicated that he was not very composed. I thought you said you wouldn't interfere. Yes, I said that. And it's his destined fight, something that doesn't concern me. She commented like it was nothing, only to have her light blue eyes flash dangerously. But I won't let you kill him. All right then. With the juggernaut drive you won't even stand a chance. Tiamat cut him off, making Valley look at her intently. With your divide you won't stand a chance either. She added herself, with a rather dismissive tone of voice. And in the miraculous event that you have time to activate your half dimension, guess what? Tiamat's gaze hardened greatly. You don't have a chance. Tiamat's aura began to stir with even more force, causing Valley's armor to start freezing. Even if you had time to combine all those skills, Tiamat held up one of her fingers, unable to help but give her a rather creepy smile. I could still kill you with one hit. Finally, the killing intent of the ice disappeared, causing everyone's tension to drop noticeably. But, like I said before, it's not my match. She added with a small sigh. That's why I'm not allowed to kill you. Just get the hell out of here and resume your fight another time, when Issei is strong enough to kick your ass. Valley and Issei looked at the woman with their eyes wide open, since they didn't expect that outcome. Just when things seemed to calm down, the albino and the others noticed how the magical seals created through Ophis's power began to crack. Almost there, Odin exclaimed, slightly gritting his teeth. Seeing this, a small smile appeared on Valley's face, at the same time he raised his two hands and created huge magic circles, which quickly collided with the seals, causing them to finish collapsing creating a glassy sound as they broke into a thousand pieces. Okay, a guy with a cane came out of nowhere, visibly surprising the albino. Baiko, Valley's surprised tone matched her reaction. I'm glad you're well, the man commented with a smile. I had felt an incredibly gigantic energy just a few seconds ago. I thought you were dead. Hearing his words, the albino fixed his gaze on Tiamat. I will not die until I defeat everyone one step above me. She declared with great seriousness, to then fix her gaze on Issei. Kyoto Issei. Hearing being named, Issei stared at him. You are not the weakest Sekiryote, and you are far from the strongest. He declared, as a magic circle appeared at his feet. But, without a doubt, you are the most interesting. He added with a smile. I hope our next match will be even more exciting. Those were the last words of the albino before disappearing along with his partner. There was an overwhelming silence for a few seconds. The completely destroyed battlefield was a living image of what had happened. Issei, are you alright? The dragon asked, kneeling in front of him when she saw that her gaze was shadowed. Finally, Issei gritted his teeth and hit the ground with great force. Curse. She cried out in rage, looking at Tiamat. If you say it's my battle, if you say you have nothing to do with it. She ranted, squeezing her eyes shut. Then why the hell did you get in there? The brown-haired man was immensely surprised when he felt how warm hands cupped his cheek with great affection, raising his face. He was forced to see Tiamat's expression, and he could clearly see that she was not at all pleased with his reaction. 
Did you think about how I would feel if something happened to you? She asked herself, making Issei's eyes widen even more. Do you know how devastated and broken I would feel? The dragon couldn't help but frown slightly. I just intervened, because I didn't want to lose you. Her last words came out in a somewhat painful whisper, that only Issei and Penemu could hear. The chestnut couldn't help but lower his gaze. He felt like a complete idiot. I, I'm sorry. She replied with all her regret, only to blush slightly when she felt Tiamat kiss her forehead. As long as you understand, he commented, outlining a sweet smile, denoting his precious fangs. I suppose peace between the factions is even more necessary now. Michael commented, receiving a quick nod from everyone. A new criminal organization, Odin thought aloud, taking a small sigh. At any moment they are going to kill this poor old man with so much stress, he finished, stretching his back. Don't worry, Lord Odin, Ross declared, being accompanied by Gaspar who was carrying Kaneko. I'll make sure to protect Asgard, and of course, you too. I know, the god answered with a small smile. I would like to continue talking, but we must go. Sirzex declared, giving the Elzebub a quick look. We're in hell, and I'm afraid the attacks haven't just been limited to our meeting. One of the three divisions of the Chaos Brigade was commanded by Valley, and he made it quite clear that he has no evil ambitions, so he should not have attacked the city. Azazel declared, then narrowed her eyes at him. Though I can't say the same for the other two divisions that appeared. Elsewhere in hell, everything was flames, destruction, and ruin in that part of the city. Where once stood the mansion of one of the most important pillars, it had been reduced to ashes, along with his entire family. Standing on one of the few pieces of rubble that wasn't burning, a man was throwing and catching his spear, apparently amused by the sight. A man appeared behind him along with a woman, both had a serious face covered in blood, just like their apparent leader. Although, the latter had a rather satisfied expression on his face. We destroyed all the reserves of the Phoenix Tears and also eradicated the entire family. The man commented, making the subject stop playing with his spear, and look at him out of the corner of his eye. Are you sure? She asked. Phoenixes were never easy to kill, for obvious reasons. No doubts. The woman answered confidently. We also took several samples with us. Most likely before long, we'll be the only ones with Phoenix Tears. A big smile appeared on the man's face after those words. Let's see how the demons survive without their source of regeneration, he declared with great grace, then got up from the rubble seat. It's time to go. I'd like to do more, but I don't think Rysbim's forces will hold out much longer. Did we do well to trust them, Sao Sao? The woman said, creating a magic circle at her feet. We only agreed on the attack. Not that I trusted them. The now recognized Sao Sao declared. They are also enemies of humanity, after all. They were the last words heard before disappearing. It's already been a week since what happened. Gaspar's comment managed to distinguish itself between the murmurs and the music. Are you still thinking about that match? He asked himself, looking at the seat next to him, seeing how Issei was wearing a rather luxurious black and white outfit. In fact, it was quite similar to the outfit Tiamat wore when he taught. Not so much in combat. The brunette commented, resting his elbow on the table behind him. Only in the great gap that exists between us. He concluded, seeing how Matsuda and Motohama were dancing excitedly along with Aika and Murayama. This definitely made him smile a little. What do you think, of your friends? Gaspar asked, watching as the women happily danced with the pervert duo in the midst of the entire crowd. To be honest, I'm surprised they dance so well. He commented himself his eyes slightly widening. That's not what I mean, the brown-haired man commented, before looking at them more carefully. Wait, were you always this good at dancing? Issei couldn't help but blink several times, as he discovered that he didn't even know how to dance. So, you mean how they are in general? Gaspar asked, raising an eyebrow. No, I know you get along with them. We were with them all week. The chestnut commented. I mean them and them. Issei stretched out his last words a bit, causing the vampire to nod slowly in understanding. I don't know, Gaspar replied, slightly narrowing his eyes. It's too early to confirm. He speaks for you, Issei commented gracefully, taking the nearest glass. I already have it quite clear. She finished, taking a small drink of her punch. 
beginning of arc chapter 35 animated anniversary are you going to keep sitting here all night rias asked sitting next to isei the brown haired man looked at her for a short second seeing that she was wearing a completely crimson lace dress with sparkles which really suited her perfectly pretty dress he commented on the chestnut deflecting the question it fits you well he finished taking some of his punch thank you so much rias exclaimed with a huge smile on her face after the praise wouldn't you like to dance i'm still affected by the last battle isei declined the offer then waved his free hand dismissively to emphasize his next words you know gaining valley's power made my dragon arm go crazy and i had a lot of trouble recovering he finished causing rias to shake her head it's healing very slowly because you didn't accept my treatment she commented the redhead with a small pout i'm sorry but no man with any decency would accept having his finger licked for hours by a naked woman she commented with a drop of sweat then blushed slightly at a memory in fact i never told him that tiamat and penemu helped me with the treatment and that the problem is gone he thought remembering how penemu hugged him from behind with only her white nightgown while tiamat hugged him from the front with his underwear while he was half naked being a less direct treatment it took a lot longer than what rias proposed but it had bleeded every damn second so you don't want to dance rias asked slightly tilting her head to the side no thanks she commented with a smile you can't find out that i have no idea how to dance she thought internally with a very serious face all right she commented with a smile getting up from her seat if you want to do something i put a bed on top of the old building to see the stars sounds good isei commented making rias's eyes sparkle mischievously obviously isei never thought about what the redhead was probably thinking right now isei looked stick-faced as gasper had a luchador mask on the vampire yelled with great energy and threw himself against one of the tables breaking it in half causing kiba and the other servants to start clapping with nervous smiles this caused isei to look at the punch for a short second then move his glass as far away as possible by the way how old is this academy the brunette asked making rias look at him once more giving him a small smile the 100th anniversary she declared with a smile number 100,000. the brunette asked with both eyebrows raised making rias chuckle slightly you're more perceptive than you appear you know the redhead commented how long have they ruled kuo the brunette asked causing rias to look at him for a short second we ruled these lands even before kuo existed she answered then left to go to kiba and his other servants isei turned his gaze to matsuda and motohama just in time to see how they both collided with each other and made Murayama and Aika end up leaning on them. The brunette couldn't help but smile when the two women ventured out and kissed the two men. The eyes of the two widened in shock at the act, but managed to respond a few seconds later. That image of his friends made Issei very happy, though he quickly felt a small sting in his chest as a few quick memories of Rainair, Tiamat, and Penemu flashed through his mind. The brunette simply sighed, getting up from her seat and walking to the back of the stage leaving everyone to continue having fun in the rest of the gym isei closed the door to make the music stop but it was obviously useless it was already late isei whispered to himself with a fake smile on his face as he held his chest as he was about to walk out the back of the stage and leave the gym he heard the door next to him open something strange since it was a door exclusively for authorized personnel this is a little tight on me the recognized voice made the brunette slightly widen his eyes i told you your fat ass would bother you in that dress the other voice only made isei widen her eyes even more hey the brunette turned his gaze from him just in time to see tiamat's small frown my butt is not fat the discussion ended there when they both realized who was there isei both women asked blinking several times in great astonishment Issei simply opened his mouth and closed it again, unable to find a word. Her hand that was holding her chest fell as if the puppeteer had abandoned her puppet, since the brunette had been completely paralyzed, and that pain had disappeared. He had disappeared before the beauty that was in front of him. Tiamat wore a light blue, glittery one-piece dress that clung tightly to her figure. In fact, he was holding on so tightly that his hips seemed about to tear the suit apart. Around his neck was a cute white dragon-shaped necklace that fit him perfectly. 
He wasn't sure if it was the first time he'd seen Tiamat in heels, but that bright white color matched his dress perfectly. Meanwhile, Hanamu was wearing a dress very similar to the dragon's, although it was seen to be much looser. Her tone was completely black with small golden details that gave her dress a majestic shine. He could also see something new in Penemu, as she was wearing crimson lipstick that matched her beautiful eyes perfectly. Her heels were red, giving a perfect contrast to her dress. Although her regalia was not as tight as Tiamat's, her rather built figure was very distinguishable with the naked eye. Especially her breasts, which seemed to be about to collapse the fabric. Something normal, since it was very difficult to get a dress that fit her for those two big, big reasons. Seeing that Issei kept staring at them without saying a word, both women looked at each other, then back at him. Something happens, Penemu asked, causing Issei to focus her gaze on her. No, just, wow, the brunette commented, making them both look at each other in confusion. How do they do that? The brown-haired question made them both look at him strangely. Do what? Tiamat asked, raising an eyebrow. How do they get so beautiful? Issei's words fiercely lit the cheeks of both women. Tiamat and Penemu couldn't help lowering their gaze with a small smile, somehow, trying to hide her enormous blush and her expression fascinated by such a great and sincere compliment. We must thank Azazel, he said these dresses would fit us, Tiamat commented. By the way, why do you want to leave? Penemu asked in an attempt to divert the subject, only so that the blush on her face would not last. Hmm. Issei was caught off guard. He didn't want to worry them with that strange pain he felt in his chest. No say Baylor. In those moments, Issei's figure turned to stone. Tiamat and Penemu looked at each other with small smiles on their faces. You seriously don't know how to dance? The two women asked with a slightly mocking tone making Issei's pale figure almost shut up as a huge imaginary arrow with the word, uneducated, was stuck deep into her chest. I came across as a complete jerk. He thought the brunette internally, with a completely devastated voice, although his paralyzed figure did not undergo any change. Both women looked at each other, then giggled. Yes, they were both thinking the same thing. Come with us. Tiamat pulled Issei by the tie, locking him with them in the authorized personnel room. What did they do? The chestnut asked, seeing how the room inside had a couple of mirrors, a closet, and a large armchair in the center along with a table, where there were different cosmetics. You do not want to learn? Tiamat asked, making Issei stiffen. I've never I've never seen it necessary to do so. Issei cut himself off as the song radically changed, playing much more romantic music. W wow. The brown-haired man couldn't help but scream when Tiamat pounced on him encircling his two soft hands around Issei's neck. Just relax, she declared in a whisper, since she was close to the brunette's face. No one will enter here. My friends and I are at the table taking shots, drinking fast and talking slowly. Let yourself be carried away by the rhythm. Tiamat whispered in her ear, making Issei's body shudder slightly. Come and start a chat just with me and believe me, I'll give you a chance now. Issei began to move slowly, trying to follow Tiamat's slow footsteps somewhat clumsily. Toma am I mono. Tiamat's hand delicately took Issei's, giving it light caresses. The brown-haired man looked at her face at all times, and the affectionate expression in those caresses made the tension of her body begin to drop. Put. Ban the man. On the record player and then we start dancing. Issei's pace heatedly improved, making Tiamat able to go at a slightly faster pace. And now I'm singing. Issei's eyes locked with Tiamat's, where he couldn't help but feel lost before her precious eyes. Girl, you know I want your love. Your love was made by hand for someone like me. Issei picked up the pace of his steps a bit, making Tiamat slightly surprised. Come on, follow my example. A big smile appeared on both their faces at the moment their foreheads collided with great delicacy and affection. I may be crazy, but I don't care. Tiamat's other hand lovingly took the brown's remaining hand, causing him to look at her uncertainly. Just as she opened her mouth to find out what it was, Tiamat bumped her forehead against Issei's again. Tell me. Boy, don't talk too much. The dragon slowly placed Issei's hands on her waist, to then hug him by the neck and make their bodies tighten. Take me by the waist and put your body on mine. Come on. Follow my example. Come on. Follow my example. Boom. Their dance became almost perfect, 
their bodies moved with an impressive synergy while their faces had a small, but very sweet smile. They didn't need to have their eyes open to know how the other felt, because their gestures and the reaction of their bodies made it clear. I'm in love with the way you are. The bodies of both were joined even more, causing their noses to touch. We push and attract each other like a magnet. Though my heart is also falling. I'm in love with your body. Last night you were in my room. All the memories of him and her sleeping together flooded their minds. And now my sheets smell like you. Every day something new is discovered. Tiamat's voluptuous figure became more and more present with each step. I'm in love with your body. Do 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 do. The rhythm of the dance intensified even more. I'm in love with your body. Do 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 do. I'm in love with your body. Do 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 do. I'm in love with your body. Every day something new is discovered. I'm in love with the way you are. Wow. Issei couldn't help but yell as Tiamat forced him into a big spin, stopping in Penemu's arms. The brown-haired man just smiled and accepted the tender hug that the Kadri gave him with her hands, surrounding him by the neck. Issei didn't take long to act, and he quickly hugged her around her waist. While the music continued to play, the brown-haired man was as fast as he could to Penemu's rhythm, something that was a bit difficult for him at first, and you could tell because he didn't take his eyes off his shoes. When he finally got into the groove, he looked up, only to delight in the beautiful crimson eyes and pretty face of his dance partner. Girl, you know I want your love. Both joined their foreheads with great tenderness, while they closed their eyes to be flooded by the sensation of the dance and the music. Your love was made by hand for someone like me. Issei tightened his grip on Penemu's waist a bit more, causing the cadre to blush slightly. The intensity of the dance increased a bit, courtesy of Issei. Come on. Follow my example. I may be crazy, but it doesn't matter. Tell me. Boy, let's not talk too much. Take me by the waist and put your body on mine. Penemu pressed her body against Issei's, making them both share a small blush at the growing sensation in their breasts. It was just something fantastic. Come on. Follow my example. Come on. Follow my example. Boom. Penemu linked her hands with the chestnuts in a quick movement, without allowing their bodies to separate even an inch. I'm in love with the way you are. Their hands intertwined with great affection. We push and attract each other like a magnet. Though my heart is also falling. I'm in love with your body. Penemu's breasts pressed against Issei's chest with great force. Last night you were in my room. Memories of the times they were in the same bed together jolted their minds. And now my sheets smell like you. Every day something new is discovered. I'm in love with your body. Do 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 do. The rhythm of the dance intensified even more. I'm in love with your body. Do 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 do. I'm in love with your body. Do 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 do. I'm in love with your body. Every day something new is discovered. I'm in love with the way you are. Penemu made Issei stagger to the side, getting Tiamat to take his other hand. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. The three of them left the room laughing as they danced to an incredible rhythm, completely in sync, not caring that the brown-haired man had to dance with two women at the same time. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. The three of them stormed out of the gym, nearly breaking down the door. Though they were clearly having too much fun to notice. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. The three continued to dance with a great rhythm, slowly going into the trees. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. I'm in love with the way you are. The completely beautiful and smiling face of the two women while they danced with great joy in the light of the stars was engraved on the retinas of the chestnut. We push and attract each other like a magnet. Issei used his arms to pull them in and out with great grace, making the dragoness and the cadre enjoy every movement. Though my heart is also falling. I'm in love with your body. Last night you were in my room, and now my sheets smell like you. Every day something new is discovered. I can't believe it. I'm dancing. She thought the chestnut with great emotion, while dictating the rhythm of the dance to her two future lovers. I'm in love with your body. The laughter was only audible to the three of them. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. The happiness of that night only belonged to them. Vamos. Say am I. I'm in love with your body. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. Vamos. Say am I. I'm in love with your body. Come on. Be my girl. Come on. Vamos. Say am I. 
I'm in love with your body. Every day something new is discovered. Finally, Tiamat and Penemu ended up nestled in the arms of the man they loved, breathing in a flurry of adrenaline and desire. I'm in love with the way you are. Once the song ended, far from separating, the dragon and the cadre deeply closed their eyes with great passion and hugged the chestnut tightly. Do you want to dance another? They both asked at the same time. Several hours later, finally, one more, they became many more. They were dancing all night, without anyone. Noticing. Rias had wondered where he had gone, along with Gaspar and the others. But they finally thought that he had left, because he still resented the dragon arm and corrupted energy from him. Far from what everyone suspected, Issei was much closer than everyone thought. The stars are like little snowflakes, commented Tiamat, lying on the bed on the terrace of the old building, along with Issei and Penemu. That's why I like them, she concluded, reaching up for her hand and squeezing it tightly. It's funny to think that you didn't like snow before, the brunette commented gracefully, causing Tiamat to give him a cute look. You made me change my mind, he finished, placing his hand on his chest again, placing his head a little closer to the brunette's shoulder. Tiamat's words made Issei think a couple of things. I think I get it, he stated, causing both women to look at him quizzically. Before the supernatural world, I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. Matsuda and Motohama always tried to create an environment for me, but it was just impossible. Issei looked at the stars, remembering many things. At first, I would say that they could never do it because the only place where I would feel at home would be in the supernatural world. But the truth is that it was not like that. Issei couldn't help but rub his cheek. It's not that Kiba, Kaneko, Akino, Rias and everyone else have treated me badly. In fact, quite the opposite. They are very nice, but the reality is that I am, different. He commented, thinking that he had found the right word. That's right, different. Obviously, he had not measured the consequences of his words, so he did not know the great emotions that led to the two women he loved so much. Issei was slightly surprised when Penemu hugged his arm tightly, covering her face in the brunette's shoulder. Issei took this as something strange, though he quickly grew concerned when he felt his shoulder getting wet. Penemu. The chestnut asked, unable to know why he had started to cry. Was it something I said? Issei tried to comfort her, but her attention was quickly diverted when she felt Tiamat sit down next to her. Of course. She commented with a blush on her face, as she positioned a hand between her breasts. Those words did us so good, the dragon pounced on Issei, snuggling into her chest. Because we love you too, Issei. Now, let's just dream together, Penemu whispered in his ear, before giving him a kiss on his cheek. Tiamat kissed his other cheek. Both kisses lasted longer than Issei could guess, so the faint blush on her face at the act of the two beauties only increased even more. I suppose it wouldn't be bad to sleep here, with you, the brown-haired man thought with his blush still in force, as he hugged the dragon and the fallen, who snuggled closer and closer to his body. The next day, Issei was looking out the window in his math class. It's not that he wasn't interested in the class. The problem is that there was a thought that had been tormenting him for several days. I hope our next match will be even more exciting. The chestnut couldn't help but frown at the memory. These days I haven't done anything to improve. She thought to herself with great seriousness. I'm completely fine now. I think it's time to start. She concluded, just as the bells rang, signaling the end of the hour. Before Matsuda and Motohama could speak to him, Kiba appeared at the door. Issei, I've come to take you to the club. He declared the blonde, leaning against the door frame with his arms crossed. The brown-haired man got up without saying a word and followed him without question. From his partner's expression, he was sure it wasn't anything bad. At the occult club, Issei couldn't help but blink several times as he settled in one of the corners of the room, seeing how Sona Sitri and her entourage were there, as well as Azazel, Tiamat and Penemu. Their mistresses already know. Azazel began to speak, while he adjusted his metal arm. But from what I see, they still don't know anything. He added, then fixed his gaze on them. Both families have been accepted into the rating games amateurs. Wait, but Rias's peerage is not complete. Yes, I know. Azazel interrupted Saji. I was able to convince the event administrators to add Rias with one less servant. I convinced them, 
solely because they want to see the potential I talked about so much about Issei. He commented she, giving the brunette a look. In hell, no one has heard of you, except that you are known for being rather weak, and for a somewhat strange victory against the late Razor. This made the brunette frown. Still, everyone would like to see the Sekiryote fight in an official rating game. That will be the perfect time for you to shut all of hell up. He concluded, then looked at everyone again. Rating games amateurs may sound like a trifle, but it's not. It will be a small tournament where the strongest entourage among all the beginners will be decided. Azazel looked at Sona and Rias's reaction for a short second, making his smile slightly widen. It is already known that there is an entourage that could rival the professionals. Those people are probably the biggest obstacle in their way. Azazel rose from his seat, placing a hand on Penemu's shoulder. Since they are facing an opponent they can't even dream of winning right now, Penemu agreed to train them. It will be a training for the next three months. Penemu fixed his gaze on Issei for a short second, then looked at them again. One of you already knows what my training methods are like. But for those of you who don't know, I'll just say that I'm not here to be a babysitter. Before you train with me, you must pass a test. That way, I'll make sure that you really they're ready to take it. Will it be the same test from that time? She couldn't help but think about the chestnut, remembering how they had a little confrontation. Do not worry, Azazel commented, seeing that everyone was very nervous at Penemu's words. If they fail, they will receive training from me, and a friend. Azazel slightly relaxed the waters. But believe me, she is the best teacher you could have, much better than me, and anyone. He concluded, then looked at his metal arm again. Don't waste the opportunity. He finished, making everyone swallow deeply. Let's go to the gym. Declared Penemu with a slight nod of her head. There I will explain the conditions. Conditions. Issei wondered internally. Before she had only told me to attack her without thinking. I guess the method she will use will be different. She concluded, following the cadre, just like everyone else. In the gym. Everyone watched with great attention as Penemu did her previous stretching before starting the fight. He was wearing typical clothing of his that revealed a large part of his body, hinting that he was not up for games this time, as he was not wearing his ultra-heavy dark robe. The gym's hue was somewhat greenish, indicating that they were in a pocket dimension for obvious reasons. Well, for starters, the cadre commented, as she continued with her stretching. They can all attack me at once. I don't care. This statement took more than one by surprise. I warn you that I will use all my power from the beginning. We've faced a cadre before, and we could see its potential. Rias thought. I do not think it is that complicated. Look at their looks. Azazel commented in one of the stands, being accompanied by Tiamat. The only one, who doesn't seem to be taking this lightly is Issei. It is normal. The dragon commented. He's the only one who knows what she's capable of. He doesn't even know. This last statement from Azazel made Tiamat look at him with slight intrigue. After a few seconds of stretching, the cadre finally snapped her neck and gave them a solemn look. There is only one condition for victory, he declared, as he drew his katana. Whoever can take more than one blow, he will pass. This caused everyone to look at her with wide eyes. Are you kidding? Saji wondered, rubbing his hair. At its maximum power, Penemu is as strong as Valley in its first evolution. The brown-haired man thought, clenching his fists tightly, and then putting a foot forward, materializing his armor. This is the opportunity he was looking for. He concluded, with a big smile on his face. His gauntlet flashed countless times, indicating the large amount of augmentation he was already using out of sheer excitement. I guess he's not. Sona commented, opting for a combat pose, just like everyone else. There are only five minutes left until the end of the break. Rias thought, perhaps for that reason he imposes an apparently simple condition on us. Well, Penemu fixed her gaze on everyone. Begin. Guys, this is the plan. Rias and Sona tried to accommodate their servants, only to have their eyes widen as a crimson trail headed straight for Penemu, no matter what their mistress said. You can't control a true dragon. Tiamat thought with a small smile, seeing Issei's reaction. After being a few meters from Penemu, Everything became noticeably slower for the chestnut. What will be his first move? He thought with great intensity, trying to decipher each possibility. Although he did not expect at all what was about to happen. 
Issei's eyes widened in shock as Penemu tossed her katana into the air. Although her face was still incredulous at the move, Issei didn't get carried away and came to the conclusion that it was a trick, so she quickly tried to punch him. Her expression was nearly unreadable as Penemu's figure blurred, her fist driving completely through the cadre's face. The problem is that she hadn't hit anything. Issei went all the way through the figure. She quickly landed and looked away from her, trying to understand what had happened. Where are they looking? Everyone's eyes widened in shock as Penemu appeared behind Saji out of nowhere, causing the blonde to jump back. Saji quickly tried to bind her with his sacred gear ability, but again Penemu's body was pierced through. But what? Tsubaki thought out loud, completely incredulous. His speed. Sona managed to figure it out quickly, though that didn't help. After all, Penemu had already appeared in front of Saji. The blonde barely had time to blink in shock before receiving a hard punch to his stomach that generated a huge shock wave. Saji's eyes quickly turned white and he spat out a large amount of blood. Now, show them, Azazel thought, outlining a small smile. Sona's entire entourage began to attack him with various magical attacks. Neither of them noticed when Penemu appeared practically in front, striking each one in the abdomen with equal force. One of the pawns tried to hit him but Penemu again moved at disgustingly high speed and struck him in the back with a hideous sound. While the bodies were still in the process of falling to the ground, Sona could see how Penemu turned her face towards where she was. Position 0. Now, the student council president yelled, making the last five people left of her group form a circle, in a lame attempt to cover every corner of the gym. Everyone's faces froze as they felt a figure appear in the center of the circle. Very weak. Were the last words they heard, before each one received a blow to their backs. Finally, everyone's unconscious bodies fell to the ground almost at the same time, indicating that the entire match had taken place in only about five seconds. Show them why you were the right hand of God, Azazel exclaimed in his thoughts, with a mischievous smile on his face. Penemu closed her eyes with great tranquility as she cracked her neck, to then raise her hand and catch the katana, which was only now falling again. Let's see what the Grimori are made of, he stated, setting the katana down. Everyone's expression was one of complete delight right now. Even Issei was completely shocked by what had just occurred. In fact, to say that he was merely impressed is an understatement. This is bad, Issei thought, watching how all of Sona's entourage was writhing on the ground. We must attack now, Rias exclaimed, forcefully shaking his hand. Get into attack position, before she makes a move. That will not work. The chestnut's words made everyone look at him. Right now, we're ants trying to fight an elephant, he commented, biting his thumb. No matter what we do, we don't stand a chance. The best we can do is wait and try to counter once she attacks us. The only advantage we have is our numbers, he stated, making everyone nod. Wow, Azazel commented in clear astonishment, impressed that Issei would take the lead over Rias, when she was the leader. A small smile appeared on Penemu's face. As always, you are very attentive, the cadre thought, before beginning to walk. In that case, her gaze was fixed solely on Issei. It'll be better to finish off the most troublesome one first. Suddenly, Penemu stopped walking, and started running, making Issei narrow his eyes. Suddenly, Penemu's figure slowed down in her eyes, while she listened attentively to each one of her steps. Her eyes widened greatly when she stopped hearing footsteps and Penemu's figure became somewhat transparent. Now, she thought to herself, looking away from her as fast as she could. Her eyes slowly drifted to the back, watching as Penemu appeared there. He predicted their movement, Azazel thought with his eyes slightly wider than normal. Issei quickly turned around and tried to kick him in the chest. Penemu slightly widened her eyes at the brunette's unexpected reaction. Awesome. She exclaimed the cadre, causing Issei's eyes to widen in shock as her leg went through Penemu's chest. But that is not enough. She finished her off, causing Issei to spit out a large amount of blood as half of Penemu's arm caved in and she shattered the armor on her abdomen. Before Issei's eyes rolled back, he could see how the cadre had moved at such speed, that she was in a totally different posture from the one he had seen her not even a second ago. Issei rolled on the ground, causing everyone to look back but it was too late. The second to bite the dust was Gasper, and everyone quickly followed suit. 
being knocked down by a single attack. And the funny thing is that they couldn't even see from where or how they were attacked. Finally, Penemu took her katana, just at the same time that all the unconscious bodies hit the ground. I suppose that's all. Tiamat commented, watching as they all writhed like larva on the ground. I don't think Penemu agreed to my request, just to humiliate them like that. Azazel's statement made Tiamat look at him for a short second. And as if her words had been an omen, Penemu quickly turned around and stopped an attack in its tracks. Did you think you would finish me off so easily? Issei asked with a defiant smile, which was a bit overshadowed by the enormous amount of blood that ran from her mouth. Penemu's usually serious face twisted into a small smile. In the end, his secret plan had turned out as he wanted. Why didn't we come with the others? Asked the brown-haired man, while he was riding in one of Hell's trains along with Azazel, Tannen, Penemu and Tiamat. You start earlier. It was Azazel's simple answer, who placed his feet on the front seat. You should be grateful to get a little more sleep this weekend. He added, with a rather nonchalant tone. You'd better prepare yourself mentally, Issei. Penemu commented, making the brunette look at her. The training will be even more sweltering than before. This made Issei swallow deeply. But what will I train my body for? Asked the chestnut. That is to say, I understood that I was almost at the limit of my abilities. Almost, but you still have a little to go. The cadre clarified, in order to unleash your first evolution, you need to be at your full potential. She concluded her, making Issei's face acquire great interest from one second to the next. Also, you must train with your katana. If you noticed, Valley's divide can be very annoying, but he won't be able to activate it if he doesn't receive a magical or physical hit from his opponent. Issei nodded, indicating that she had understood where the whole thing was going. But, obviously you're going to have to get a lot more power to make Valley not be able to touch you with any kind of attack, at least in the first minute of the fight. That will give you some advantage. She finished, receiving another nod from the brunette. To release my first evolution, I'll also need a very strong emotional trigger. Like when I managed to use my ultimate ability, the brown-haired commented, remembering everything that had happened. You're right. Penemu commented with a slight blush on her cheeks, since she also remembered what happened very well. Changing the subject, I still can't believe Tannen agreed to train them, Issei stated in genuine astonishment. I also agree with the peace treaty. The Dragon King commented. I wanted to show my connection to the cause in some way, and this is the best I found. Tiamat couldn't help but frown at this, but he didn't express his displeasure. Obviously, that doesn't take away from the fact of everything that the demons, and the other two factions did. But, the truth is that they are threatening a friend of mine. And not only that, you are one of the few remaining vestiges of the dragons, Issei. I can't allow your companions to be a great burden, instead of a support. I appreciate that you consider me a friend. But, Issei lowered his gaze slightly. I am a demon, not a dragon. Having Deedrag's respect makes you a dragon. Tannen's comment made the brunette look at him with great somberness. Having such a great emotion and passion to fight makes you a dragon. Not letting anyone control you and trample your pride makes you a dragon. Being trained by a dragon queen makes you a dragon. Tannen got up from his seat in front of everyone's eyes. Having all the characteristics of a dragon, is what makes you a dragon. Tannen crossed her arms, unable to help but smile. From my point of view, you are not a devil and you never were. Did you get to see all of that from the beginning? Tiamat asked, somewhat impressed by her friend's words. Of course not. He answered quickly, causing the dragon to look at him as if he were an idiot. I only saw his eyes. Everyone looked at him strangely at his words. What's wrong with my eyes? Issei asked, making Tannen sit up and look at him with a smirk. Your eyes scream that you are not what you appear to be. He answered, causing everyone to look at him in slight confusion. Hey, okay, the brunette commented, not knowing how to respond to that, before jumping up. I'll go to the bathroom. He stated, closing one of the nearby doors. Don't you think you're being reckless? It didn't take you long to ask me that. Just as I expected of your troublesome nature, Tiamat. Tannen declared, unable to help but opt for an amused look when the dragon gave her a dirty look. Strengthening the devils won't be a problem. The dragon commented, while Azazel and Penemu listened attentively to the talk. 
they will never try anything against the famous Sekiryote who is a devil. Tannen chuckled slightly at his own words, before giving him a very sharp look. And if you plan to do something to him, you must remember that the Dragon Queen will not be the only cause of his extinction. Chapter 36. Getting ready for the raiding games. Shall we train in the Cursed Forest? Sona asked, as she surveyed the vast majority of the forest on the nearby mountain. No, she answered Azazel quickly, appearing together with Sona, Rias, and his servants. I brought you here so you'll understand why Penemu discarded you. Hearing this, everyone looked at the forest with great attention, seeing how Issei and Penemu were in a small area without trees. Before we begin, I'd like to clear up a couple of things. She declared the cadre, receiving a quick nod from the brunette. Training consists mostly of using your katana. You are allowed to use your dragon shot, but not as often as you do. She commented, narrowing her eyes slightly. Understood. Issei nodded quickly, drawing his katana. You explained the reasons to me while we were traveling here. I have no objection. He concluded, receiving a satisfied nod from the cadre. The second thing I wanted to tell you, is rather something that will help you to know where you stand. Hearing this, Issei couldn't help but lower his katana with a raised eyebrow. What do you mean by that? She asked herself, causing Penemu to hold up a finger. I mean your scale of power. She commented, making the brunette look at her with great interest. Level 1 is where the weaker low-class devils, angels, and fallen angels are located, among others, Penemu waved her hand, indicating that the list was quite long. The ones in 2, are medium and high-class devils, are similar to that power. She added the cadre, to then slightly serious her gaze. You are at 3, along with the strongest high-class devils, angels, and fallen angels. Obviously, you are in this position if you don't use your explosion. Hum, but I can use it, the brunette commented, causing Penemu to narrow her eyes slightly. You're sure? She asked. Yeah, he commented as if he was the most normal thing in the world, clenching his fists tightly and activating his armor in progress. After a second, her eyes widened in disbelief. I cannot do it. He exclaimed the brunette with great surprise. You already forgot the feeling. The cadre replied, causing Issei to look at her intently. But don't worry, you'll get it back in this training, she concluded, before returning to her serious look. As she was saying, Penemu held up six of her fingers. If you use explosion, you would reach six. One level behind the strongest fiends and cadres, such as Sirzex, Azazel, Beelzebub, among others, Penemu finally snapped her neck, then stared at him. To begin with, I'll adapt to your current level, putting myself just one level above. That way, you'll know how much a difference there is between one level and the next. That is to say, that you started with four. The brown-haired commented, as he clung tightly to his katana. A storm of violet lightning raged violently around Penemu as she violently drew her katana. Do not disappoint me. They were the last words of the cadre, before the fight began. Penemu's katana rose into the air, then headed off at full speed. After the battle against Valley, that speed was very easy for Issei to follow. Another thing is that her body responded as quickly as that time. Numerous slashes and slashes collided with each other, creating numerous metallic sounds. The violet rays emitted by Penemu's katana fell to the ground, without doing any kind of damage to the brunette. Finally, the noise of the metal stopped for a moment when Issei covered the last blow from him, outlining a small smile. According to him, he was keeping up with the cadre perfectly. From one second to the next, Penemu frowned slightly and her thrusts doubled in speed, making her movements slightly blurry. The brown's eyes widened immensely at the increase in speed. In fact, the surprise was so great that he had no choice but to jump to the side to dodge the cadre's final attack, which left a deep crater in the ground. Issei lowered his gaze slightly, seeing that his armor had heavy damage in the center, indicating that the attack had passed closer than it seemed. That's all, Penemu asked, her hair fluttering freely from her lightning aura. Before he could even reply, Issei's eyes widened as Penemu disappeared in a blur. The brunette began to sweat as he listened to sounds from different directions running through the surrounding trees. After a few seconds with nothing happening, Issei held on tightly to his katana and spun around, swinging his sword at a violet beam that was going to hit him. The brunette turned his body again at high speed, blocking another beam with his katana. 
In this way, he was blocking all the attacks successively at a great speed. Tired of this, Issei raised his hand and quickly turned around, creating a small orb. Dragon shot. The small beam was disintegrated, and the crimson attack continued its attack to one of the nearest trees. Once the attack was through the tree, Issei quickly followed the figure of Penemu that had escaped from her hiding place. Just as he was about to slash her, Penemu swung her katana around and it took on a great electrifying purple glow. A large amount of lightning shot out of the ground immediately after, creating small cracks and causing the brown-haired man to close one of his eyes at the electrifying pain, in addition to being thrown backwards by the same lightning bolts. I still have many tricks that I haven't taught you. She stated the cadre, as she watched as Issei crash landed. That doesn't change anything, the brunette exclaimed, pounced on Penemu. The cadre stopped her lunge without any difficulty, making Issei blink slightly in disbelief at the ease. Penemu deflected Issei's katana with great ease, to then unleash multiple thrusts that went at impressive speed. Dance of the Eleven Bloody Grips. Quote dot dot dot. This is the training. Rius wondered wide-eyed, watching as Issei blocked the deadly attacks with the metal of his katana. You haven't seen anything yet. Azazel taunted, waiting for the match to progress to the next phase. Finally, Issei was able to break Penemu's continuous attacks, knocking her back with his katana. When he wanted to attack her again, the woman disappeared again. Issei wasted no time and quickly ran into the trees, dodging and blocking the lightning bolts. When he finally reached Penemu, he attempted to slash her down with a downward attack, but the cadre dodged with great ease and scuttled into another tree. Issei quickly followed her, making her swords collide a few times in the air, generating small sparks. In one of the many attacks, Issei blocked a sword blow from his teacher, only to see how Penemu's katana turned purple, at the same time that it began to flash. The brunette gave a small sigh to relax, just at the same time that he twisted his katana to the side, blocking and deflecting Penemu's attack, causing a large wave of lightning to shoot at Issei's side, causing a large number of trees be destroyed. Penemu couldn't help but widen her eyes slightly at the demonstration. This is very easy. She declared with a smile, as she dodged and blocked all of Penemu's attacks. I don't think you get it. He declared, jumping back a little. You still haven't had a clear opportunity to attack me. Instead of answering him, the brunette focused on the shine of the metal of his katana, being able to see that a magic circle was created behind him, probably placed during the battle. The brunette jumped to the side just in time, dodging the bolt that shot out, impressing Penemu again. I can't say you're doing it wrong though. She exclaimed the cadre, parrying the chestnut's katana, then leaping back. Penemu stared at him, then gave him a small smile. So, let's see how you handle the five. A large amount of lightning energy surrounded Penemu, causing a small smile to appear on Issei's face. That's what I was waiting for. He whispered, only to have his eyes widen in shock as Penemu created a large current of air that carried lightning of considerable size. The chestnut had enough reaction to jump as high as possible, making the attack pass below. His eyes widened greatly as the attack cut down four trees with one clean cut. That distraction almost cost him dearly, as Penemu rushed towards him, delivering a great attack. Issei was barely able to dodge the killing blow, as Penemu's katana only grazed his hand, giving him a small cut. Breaking expansion. Issei's eyes widened in disbelief as the katana's edge received a great extension through united, solid bolts, piercing through the rest of his armor and cutting a very deep gash down the length of his entire arm. Issei couldn't help but grit his teeth at the immense pain of feeling how the magic of light and lightning penetrated deep into his arm, although he didn't have time to lament. The brown-haired man jumped back numerous times, dodging not only Penemu's katana, but also that strange addition that gave the katana's metal another meter. Issei continued to dodge and jump, until he was forced to block an attack, clenching his teeth tightly at the radical change in difficulty. The protagonist's eyes widened as Penemu disappeared again. But this time, Penemu's position was almost indecipherable, since he was going so fast that the sounds of his footsteps through the trees could be heard from everywhere and at all times. His eyes widened even more as a bolt of lightning appeared just inches from him, striking him flat and causing him to scream as he fell to his knees. The brunette removed his hand from his abdomen, only to see how there was a small hole in his armor, in addition to the amount of blood that he began to spill. 
aired. Issei yelled again when another bolt of lightning went through his shoulder, and then his leg, to culminate with his chest, making his eyes widen beyond power from the enormous pain, while he vomited a large amount. Amount of blood. It fell to the ground with a thud, causing the attacks to stop. Are you planning to kill him? Rias exclaimed in horror. Shut up and look. Azazel ordered with a smile. You really can't anymore. Penemu appeared on top of a tree. I guess I overestimated you. She stated, closing her eyes in regret. Those words were like a punch in the brown chest. I didn't want to disappoint her. Penemu widened one of her eyes when she heard how Issei clung tightly to his katana, slightly startled as he stood up. Now I know. Issei spat out a small amount of blood. Where are you? She concluded, swaying slightly. Penemu couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Does that change anything? The Kadri's eyes widened when Issei's wobbly body moved at a high speed where she was, causing the Kadri to jump. That's my way of running. She thought the Kadri with wide eyes, unable to believe that she was trying to imitate her speed. As she prepared to land on the ground, Penemu created numerous magic circles that went straight for the chestnut tree. Issei ran down the tree at top speed, breaking the magic circles and lightning bolts that managed to activate, receiving only one or two attacks. Penemu landed and did a great backward somersault. He quickly positioned himself and drew his katana back, engulfing it in magical power and lightning. She waved strongly towards the front, causing that strange large beam accompanied by the air current to go straight to the chestnut. Issei plunged his katana deep into the ground, generating a huge line of destruction as he kept running without stopping. Just before the attack hit him, the brunette raised his weapon with all his might and cut the lightning in two, generating a huge explosion of small lightning bolts next to him. I'll try this last thing, the Kadri whispered, swinging her katana around again. The ground was cracked even more violently than the previous time, causing larger and more forceful lightning bolts to shoot out from the ground. Although far from being harassed again by the same attack, Issei went through all the lightning, regardless of the fact that it dealt heavy damage to his armor. Penemu couldn't help but smile when she turned her katana, jumping to the final confrontation against the chestnut tree. They both extended their katanas, causing a huge blast of violet lightning and crimson energy to shoot out into the area, generating a small tremor. How come a battle like this can only be training? Gasper exclaimed with wide eyes, seeing the burst of energy that had been released. That's how Penemu's training is. Azazel answered, unable to help but slightly serious her gaze. The energy only took a couple of seconds to dissipate. Both were on either end, their katanas still tilted to one side from the attack. You managed to cut me. The Kadri stated, seeing the thin cut that ran down her entire torso. You were just as I expected, Issei, she concluded with a small smile. I'm glad, were the chestnut's last words, before a large jet of blood was expelled from his torso, falling completely unconscious to the ground. Now you understand, right? Azazel stated with an unusually serious face. How many of you could withstand such a brutal training? That's crazy. Saji commented, blinking several times, completely impressed. I thought he was the weakest Sekiryote. That's right, but it's still the Sekiryote. Sona declared, adjusting her glasses earnestly. And besides, he looks like Penemu will make sure no one else recognizes him by that title. That's why we must strive. Tsubaki stated, before giving the redhead a small smile. You were very lucky, Rias. What can I say? He commented she, moving away from the place along with everyone. Azazel gave the two of them one last look, unable to help but smile as Penemu hugged him tightly, at the same time that Tiamat appeared with a clearly desperate face. It's a good thing they're best friends, otherwise she would have killed you already, Azazel thought gracefully, leaving the place. The next day, at night, you should have seen everyone's faces when Tannen appeared and started attacking them. Azazel declared gracefully, making Penemu cross her arms. I'm not interested, she replied, as she watched from the mountain as Issei was training with Tiamat. Come on, you only have another 2000 reps to go. The dragon exclaimed excitedly, making Issei sweat. You just make me want to die right here, the brunette commented, seeing himself wearing the ultra-heavy robe while using Tiamat's ice sword, which was also known for its weight. Remember that you must complete it, or I will have to give you a punishment. Tiamat declared with a slight frown. 
Issei trembled at the thought. If Penemu was already so strict with punishments, what would the dragon be like? Obviously, it was impossible for him to figure out. I came here to tell you that there will be a meeting of all the factions within a week. The boss declared, as he watched as Issei could barely lift his sword. Another meeting? Penemu asked, looking at him sideways. It's Odin. He wants to sign a temporary alliance treaty in the face of the threats that have appeared recently. Azazel explained. He didn't say much more. He just wanted us to be present. We will not go. She replied the cadre, causing Azazel to look at her with a raised eyebrow. Could be considered an insult. Not so much for you, but more for Issei. He stated, causing Penemu to stare at him for the first time in as long as she had been chatting. I won't be able to protect him forever. The cadre's response stunned Azazel. Tiamat can't either, though it pains him to admit it. He added, looking down from him with some regret. I have to prepare him as soon as possible so that he can defend himself. Penemu fixed his gaze on Issei, unable to help but look at him with great concern. That's why I'm so strict. That's why I never give him a moment's rest. Azazel changed his astonished look to a smile, half understanding what the cadre felt. When you accepted my proposal to train all of them on the condition of dividing the work to Grigori, you never thought of training all of them, did you? He asked, looking at her sideways. I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, you can fool them, but I know your strength very well. She commented, then looked at her with a mischievous smile. Did you think that much weaker blow you landed on Issei would go unnoticed before my eyes? Penemu turned her face and gave him a fierce look. Do not tell her. Peaceful. Azazel raised his hands in defense. I didn't plan on doing it. He explained himself, calming the situation. They both stayed down for a few seconds, watching as Issei continued with his training. I understand why you do it. Azazel broke the silence, though he didn't break Penemu's gaze. You love him as much as you love her. He stated, causing Penemu to look sideways at him. I understand what you mean, but it's not like that. She commented then closed her eyes deeply at the memories of her past. That is to say, I love Issei with the same intensity or even more than Ludmiel. But, the feeling is totally different. Azazel just looked at her with a raised eyebrow, unable to decipher his friend's thoughts. After all, Azazel could never imagine that someone like Penemu was talking about love. Not in a thousand years. The brown-haired man thought, seeing that his face was on the side as he seemed to be being crushed by something. Not in a thousand years would I have imagined that this would be the punishment. Issei concluded his thoughts, while he felt like his neck was about to burst because of Tiamat's butt. Maybe it's more painful than I thought at first. She thought the dragon aloud, with slight concern, as she remained seated on the chestnut tree. I'm not going to take advantage of this situation, I'm not going to take advantage of this situation, Issei thought, as he felt how Tiamat's hands were very close to his waist. That is, from the mini Issei. But what are they doing? Penemu appeared among the trees, her gaze unreadable at what she was witnessing. It's the punishment. Tiamat exclaimed with a smile. Isn't that a good thing? He asked with an innocent look. Penemu proceeded to cross her arms, continuing with that unreadable look. As always, you are too soft. That, Tiamat couldn't help but frown slightly at what she heard. You do not get it. Tiamat's frown changed to a curious look at the cadre's question. There are thousands and thousands of men who would kill to be in Issei's position. He commented she, and then looked at the chestnut. He's just being royal punishment, because Issei is noble enough not to take advantage. He stated, then closed his eyes. Although his neck must already be at the limit. Tiamat, I'm sorry. He yelled the brunette, turning his face to the front. A huge blush appeared on the dragon's face when she felt Issei's face slide easily between her buttocks. Much better. The brown-haired man thought, relieved to feel the pain in his neck go away, although he didn't have much time to think about it. It smells like soap. The brunette thought, completely surprised. How clean. Issei couldn't think much more about it, as his face quickly turned violet from lack of air. The brunette began to move frantically causing the blush on Tiamat's face to increase as she tried to keep her balance. Issei's movements became even more violent, so her fingers sank into the dragon's rear, causing her to cover her mouth so that not even a moan would come out of her lips. Penemu simply patted her face at her best friend's antics. 
I'm beginning to suspect that she really wanted this. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one got in my storage.